This is Mrs. Palmer Quay with the first video for Module 2. In this video I want to talk a little bit about energy and about the law of conservation of energy. Energy is a hard thing to pin down. If you remember the definition of a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. Well, energy is really an idea. It's abstract. We see energy more by what it does. We can't really measure what it is. Not exactly. Energy can be defined as a property of an object. It's something that an object has, and that thing could be stored in the object or transferred to something else and converted between different forms, but it cannot be created or destroyed. We cannot make energy. We can just change one form of energy into another, and we can't destroy energy either. The book uses the definition that energy causes a system to do work, and work is related to motion, and that is also another way we can think about energy. If motion happens either macroscopically where we can see it, or microscopically or subatomically, then it is caused by energy. There are actually many ways to categorize the forms of energy, and so these are the six that I am going to use. We're going to talk about light energy, which comes in both visible and invisible forms, and we call light energy EM, or electromagnetic waves. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the course. Energy also comes in electrical forms, and I think you're probably very familiar with electrical energy coming out of the, the uh, electrical sockets in your house. Chemical energy can be found in things like batteries, where it then gets changed to electrical energy, but it's also found in food. The food gives us energy because it is chemical energy. The energy in the bonds between atoms in molecules is what is being broken when we digest our food down on the cellular level, and that is chemical energy that we can then tap into to power all our life processes in our body. Mechanical energy is the energy of objects in motion, or it can also be related to objects an object's position for potential motion. Nuclear energy concerns the change in the nucleus of atoms for the, the reactions of fission or fusion. And thermal energy, which is often called heat energy, is actually a measure of the energy because of the movement of the atoms down in the, the atomic level inside a substance. Other forms of energy that you might run into, and sometimes we'll use these in the course, we have ionization energy, which is the energy to move electrons on or off an atom, or elastic energy, if something is stretched, what is you know, the recoil, that sometimes gets lumped under mechanical. So there are other ways that, that energy gets talked about. Energy also can be broadly divided into potential energy, energy that is stored, not moving at this moment, but ready and waiting to cause, cause motion, and kinetic energy, which is that energy that is actually moving. So if you set a mouse trap, the mouse trap is full of potential energy, and then when it snaps that spring down on the mouse, then kinetic energy is what's happening. Now, in reality, as I said, this list is not a complete list because there's other ways to divide things. And some types of energy contain both potential and kinetic aspects. So it's not quite as cut and dried as you sometimes get the impression from reading the textbook. I found this illustration made by another teacher that actually uses these same six forms of energy to just review some specific examples, starting with electromagnetic energy. These are both visible and invisible waves, so visible light or invisible radio waves. Then electrical energy, we're very familiar with things coming into our house from the power lines or lightning coming down from the sky in a thunderstorm. Chemical energy, I mentioned how it is found in food, but also in, we, in any chemical reaction like you get when you strike a match. The energy that is released there is c coming out of the chemical energy stored in the bonds of the molecules. Nuclear energy, both that we use for power in nuclear fission, nuclear fusion from the sun. Mechanical energy, objects moving like our moving automobile or a moving organism like this frog. And then thermal energy, and a sense of the heat of something. So when you you know heat up a soup, you're adding thermal energy. When ice cream pulls heat out of the environment so it can melt, its thermal energy is also increasing. 
So what forms of energy can be seen in this picture? Well, starting with our lamp, of course, there's electrical energy coming in through the plug. As that electrical energy moves in through the bulb, it's going to be changed into light energy. And if it's an incandescent or a um, halogen bulb, you'll also notice some heat energy. Generally, heat is just sort of this disorganized form of energy, and it is found in all energy conversions to some extent. Our person bowling down here, well, we had to have some chemical energy to power the bowler, coming from food, of course, with all the little processes going in the cells. And then you had some mechanical energy, and we could even further, further subdivide this to say there was some potential gravitational energy as that heavy ball was pulled back and held above the ground. It contained potential energy from the gravity working on it. And then as it was thrown, again, mechanical energy moving down the um, alley. And then when it collides with the uh, pins at the end, you're going to see some more mechanical energy as they move, kinetic energy happening there, and there will also be a little bit of heat as those two substances collide again. On this page, we have examples of a nuclear reactor. So, of course, you've got some nuclear energy there as the, the um, nuclear fission happens, and that is there's quite a bit of heat released in that reaction, which is going to create steam power that will lead to electrical energy. And of course, that has a mechanical point in there too, as you turn some turbines. I should have probably put that before the mechanical, I mean, before the electrical, mechanical would occur. So heat trains to, to steam, causing mechanical turning of turbines, leading to electrical energy, all in this process of a nuclear reactor. And finally, your cell phone, what do we have there? Well, we've got some EM waves coming through the air with the information from whoever's making a call on you. And then you've got the chemical ener energy in the battery that's powering this that will then be changed to electrical energy. And the possibly you've got some sound energy that it's, if you're talking on the phone to somebody or listening to me some music on your iPhone or your smartphone, Maybe even some light energy is going to come out of that if you've got a flashlight app. So there's quite a few energy conversions that happen in your phone. And then finally, as I stated in the very beginning, we have this law of conservation of energy, that the energy in an isolated system remains the same even as the energy changes forms. It cannot be converted I mean, can it be created or destroyed? It can only be converted. Now, the keywords here, isolated system, means you're not letting anything escape to the environment. In everyday reality, we don't really live in isolated systems unless you consider the universe as a whole. But if you do isolate something in the lab, you can test to see that the energy as it changes from one form to the other, the total amount will not change. And this law applies always, even if we can't see it because our system is not isolated. So that's what I wanted to cover in this first module. Hopefully that'll set you up to a better understanding of energy as we start dealing with it in our chemistry course.